Ever wonder how to figure out how many roof drains a flat roof might need? Let me show you a simple method to get it right and how you can avoid a common mistake that could trick you into getting the wrong answer. Today's Q&A comes from Damien8, who wants some insight into a very specific plumbing question about roof drains. And Damien says, Hello, could you please show how to do this calculation? A roof that measures 90 meters by 50 meters would require how many roof drains? Thank you, Damon, for your question. I don't think I know you personally, but I got a pretty good hunch that why you've asked such a very specific question. I'm going to guess that you're either a Canadian plumbing apprentice studying for your upcoming plumbing license challenge exam, or you've already done the exam and this question stumped you when you read it. In any event, I'd be delighted to shed some light on the matter, as this could be actually a bit of a trick question. And it sounds like something that could very well be asked on the licensing exam. But the real life, honest to goodness reality, we as plumbers don't typically design roof drain systems or even spec system pipe sizes for them. That's all calculated by the engineers who design the buildings, which all get spec'd out on the approved drawings that we later receive. We actually don't even install the roof drain fixtures into the roof. That's all done by the roofing trade or whoever builds the roof when the building goes up. We as plumbers just show up on the job site, we see the existing holes peeking through the roof, usually about four inch, and install our piping according to the drawings. But roof drain sizing is part of our plumbing code, which is why we teach apprentices how to do it in trade school. And likely why apprentices are tested on it when they write their big certificate of qualification exam when they go for their license. So specking out a storm roof drain system is certainly something, something relevant to plumbers, at least academically. The roof drains in this question refer to flat roofs. So why are roof drains even needed? Roof drain systems are designed to remove rainwater or snow melt off the roof as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Water is heavy, generally about 2.2 pounds per liter or about 10 pounds a gallon. And most flat roofs aren't built to accommodate all that water weight after a heavy rainfall. So the proper amount and size of roof drains need to be installed to adequately remove that water to minimize the likelihood of damage or roof leaks coming into the building. What follows refers to Canadian and Ontario code, right from the respective code books. Maybe a similar roof drain sizing method applies in the US and the rest of the world? I don't know. Feel free to share how you guys handle roof drains by replying in the comments below. Also, for today, I'm just sticking with specifically answering the viewer's question. But there's a whole lot more to roof drains, like calculating water volume and actually sizing the piping system itself using the code book sizing tables. If you want to learn more about those details, drop a comment show your interest, and we'll elaborate on it in a future video. Okay, so let's get to it. So what we got here essentially is a base building and it's to the specs that were, were outlined in Damien Nate's question. So what we're looking at here is a building that measures 90 meters in length and 50 meters in height. And what we're gonna do actually, you can't just, according to the code, you can't just put roof drains anywhere. We're looking at the rooftop face down, by the way. and um, you need to abide by the code and we need to first see what the code says. Now we've got, I'm in Ontario, we've got the Ontario Building Code and then there's also the National Building Code. Fortunately, they mimic each other very closely. They're not identical, but they're very close. So let's take a look at first the National Building Code, which starts with a two. This is 24104, just the same. This is the uh, Provincial Building Code. 7410.4, that's his counterpart. Provincial Building Code starts with a 7, National Building Code starts with a 2. I'll probably release a video in a short while talking about some changes that have taken place with the, the Ontario Provincial Building Code. That's for another day. In the meantime, I want to point out um, what this says. This is the um, area, and by the way, they are verbatim to each other, both national and provincial. This is the area of the code that actually says how hydraulic loads should be handled for roofs or paved surfaces. So that applies to flat roofs as well. Now, I wanna skip all of the beginning because it's not really important for today's video. That's actually a useful video for another day. What I wanna really focus on are these two points right here. So essentially, there are two things that I wanna point out. This sentence D, and this sentence E. Those are the two main ones that are ultimately gonna dictate how many roof drains we need. Not only how many roof drains we need, but also ultimately the spacing of the roof drains. So D says, 
They are located not more than 15 meters from the edge of the roof and not more than 30 meters from adjacent drains. Okay. Second sentence, sentence E says there is at least one drain for each 900 square meters. Now what ends up happening, a lot of people end up seeing this. They see 900 square meters. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's go back to our example, to our building. And this is where people make a lot of mistakes. And I, this is why I'm thinking this might be a potential CFQ question because it's a little tricky if you ignore sentence D and only look at sentence E. It's going to give you a pretty nifty answer that seems right. So what we're going to do is the most common sense thing to do actually is you take, you know that we need 900 square meters of coverage for each roof drain. That's what it says in the code. Okay, fair enough. So back to grade six math, what do we do? We find out the area of the roof, quite simply, length times width, if you recall that formula. So it's gonna be 90 meters times 50 meters is gonna give you 4,500 meters. Okay, good enough. Here's the problem. Now that we have 4,500 4, meters, we can take that and someone would logically say, take that 4,500 meters and divide that by the 900 meters. Let's do that. So 4,500 divided by 900, square meters rather, this is squared, is gonna give you a nifty five, which will represent five, floor drains. And the problem is a lot of people are going to stop there. They're going to see five floor drains. There you go. There's your answer. Five floor drains. If you did answer that, you're wrong. And I'll tell you why. Let's look at the example if we ended up installing five floor drains here. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is, these are not floor drains. I'm sorry. I keep saying floor drains, roof drains. These are roof drains that are as evenly distributed as possible. Now I'm gonna throw some dimensions in here. If you recall, let's go look at our national code in this case, and let's look at sentence D. So first of all, sentence E actually, there's at least one drain for each 900 square meters. That is satisfied because we took 4,500 square meters divided by 900 square meters of coverage, that maximum that's allowed by each roof drain, and we get a nifty five out of it. Nice and clean, right? And that's why it's too easy. If something is Sometimes too easy, be careful. So we need to revert back to sentence D because people get excited and think that they got the answer. You also have to satisfy this one, which says they are located not more than 15 meters from the edge of the roof and not more than 30 meters from adjacent drains. Let's go back to our example. These are our floor drains. Now, if we had some dimensions, again, this is all to scale, so this is accurate, okay? Now, taking what the code says, each roof drain, cannot exceed more than 15 meters from the edge of each roof, uh, from, the, from each edge of the building, okay, wherever it's situated, 15 meters this way, 15 meters that way, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is our fifth drain is stuck in the middle here. If we add some dimensions to this, this is actually what we end up getting. First of all, they're 15 meters away from drain to edge and also 15 meters away from each other. Oh, sorry, I apologize, 30 meters away from each other which is essentially 30 divided by two is 15. That means that they can have an expansion of no more than 15 meters per side. That's really what it works out to. So if we actually draw true distances once from the center floor drain, we end up violating that sentence D because this drain needs to be, if you recall, 15 meters away from the edge. This drain is showing 25 meters and each drain can be no more than 30 meters away from each other. This is measuring 32 meters. By the way, as an aside, I did this by scaling it, but if, you, if you're a real math nerd, you can actually use Pythagorean theory here because you've got a right angle. So then you've got A squared plus B squared. And if you don't believe me, take your measurements and then you can find out what, uh, what the root of that answer is. And you're gonna get very close to 32 meters, okay? So it is violating code, sentence D of code. So that goes to show that this is wrong. It is not five floor drains. There's something else we gotta do. There's another step. And this step that I'm gonna show you is gonna apply to any 
and I think I keep saying floor drains. I apologize if I do. I keep mixing it up. It is not five roof drains. It's something else. This is going to apply to any roof drain scenario. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back to our base building. Let's start over again. I'm going to delete this stuff because we don't need it at the moment. Okay. What we are going to do, we know, looking at the code, we know that we cannot exceed 30 meters for each adjacent drain. So 30 meters becomes your magic number. So what we're going to do is go back here and do a little calculation. So what we're going to do is take each dimension. In this case, we're going to take 90 meters. We're going to divide that by 30 meters. We're going to multiply it after by the width of the building, which is 50 meters. We're going to divide that by 30. Here is the important point. Before you multiply anything with each other, you're going to divide these first. Okay. And you're going to end up with 'll this we don't need the fancy calculator right now standard will do so we're going to take 90 I shouldn't need a calculator for this divided by 30 is three so we've got three times something okay some of you guys have figured this out already we're going to take 50 divided by 30 and we end up with one point trailing sixes 1.666 now here's where people make the mistake some people get this far get this out of the way some people get this far very important and here is the main point before you multiply this two sides together before you multiply the two sides together you're going to round up because what that's effectively saying is that you're gonna need 1.6 floor drains to manage the coverage of 30 meters for the width 30 meters minimum coverage for each floor drain for the width 1.66 isn't gonna cut it if you multiply this two together you're going to end up with a short number. If we take 3 times 1.66, you end up with 4.98. You're obviously going to probably be, have the smarts around it, and you end up with 5 floor drain. That is wrong, Okay, we, as we saw earlier. because you, you, Although you satisfy the area requirement of 900 square meters, you don't satisfy the maximum distances from the edges and from, from each roof drain. So let's get rid of this. And we're going to round up. Never round down. Always. If you have a decimal, you're going to round up. This three stays as three because it's as whole as you can get. There is no decimal. There's no remainder. Even if this was 1.001, you're going to round up. It's going to give you that allowance of uh, the maximum allowance of 30 meters per roof drain. So when you do that, you're going to round up to two. And let's just bring this down here. So three times two equals six roof drains. And there's your answer. So at the end of the day, how it should look is like this. Six evenly spaced roof drains. And if you want to look at the dimensions, this is how it's going to look. So we're going to have same thing. These haven't changed this way. Okay. These outer four are the same in this scenario. What's changed is this here. Okay, because if you recall, we only had one here in the middle. Now we've got still got 15 meters and 50 meters from each edge of the building toward the roof drain. We still have 30 meters, at least on the horizontal, from each other. But now what we also have is properly 20 meters between drains across the width. It's okay. Remember, it's a minimum number of roof drains. It's not an exact number of roof drains. You want to make sure that you have the proper coverage. So that will satisfy this code here, not more than 50 meters from the edge of the roof, not more than 30 meters from adjacent drains. Going back to the old scenario where we had it wrong, if you recall, we had too much distance. This was greater than 15 meters from the edge of the roof. This was greater than 30 meters from adjacent roof drains. And this is what you want it to look like. And that's how you do every single roof drain question. It can work with anything. Let's let's just do a quick and dirty here. I'm going to just make a new page. And this is going to be really rough. Not to scale in this case. Doesn't really matter what it is. So I'm just going to draw something 
quick. Okay, let's make this some some weird number, whatever you want it. Let's let's make this 37 meters. And let's make this 54.9 meters. I don't know. Something like that. Right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our formula. Essentially, our formula is gonna be this. It's gonna be building length over 30 meters times building width over 30 meters. This 30 meters never changes, okay? So I'm a fan of brackets. I like using brackets in math. It doesn't matter the order you do, whether you do width or length first, same thing, okay? But what really matters is that you round up before you actually multiply the two sides together. So let's take our 37 meters, 37 meters over 30 times our width of, it's actually counterintuitive, this should be a width of 37, but it doesn't matter. Um, 54.9, I'm just making up numbers here, over 30. Okay, that's going to give us 37 over 30, 1.233, 233 times 54.9 over 30, always over 30, equals 1.83, 1.83, okay, the meters cancel out. Now, what we're going to do, again, and I can't reiterate this enough, this is where people screw up. They start multiplying the two sides. Do not multiply the two sides yet. You round up. Don't round down, only up. So this 1.233 becomes 2 times this 1.83 becomes 2. Therefore, in this case, you're going to end up with four roof drains. So let's get rid of this guy. Erase the inside. And it's going to look something like this. Okay, now again, this isn't the scale, so I can't really prove that you have the right, the right maximum distances, but you can do the math. Essentially, what you're doing is if you've got 54.9 meters, you know that you've got a leeway of 15 this way, 30, 15 this way, 15 this way. That's 30 already, plus 15, another 15 here, and you are at 60 meters already you're past the 54.9 right so as long as you have adequate coverage between roof drains and you have adequate coverage from roof drain to edge of building you're good to go and by the way these same thing applies here too so damien eight i hope this helps to accurately answer your question if you do have an impending cfq plumbing exam i sincerely wish you the utmost luck on surpassing that elusive 70 percent mark on the first go do reach out let me know how you did Hope the rest of you guys also got some useful insight out of this video. Do reach out. Let me know if you want to see anything specific. Your questions and your curiosity really are the fuel that drives me and propels me to make videos for this channel in the first place. Meanwhile, speaking of the plumbing exam, if you're an apprentice and you want to learn some surefire tips on how to beat that tricky sucker, be sure to check out this video up here right now.